Hello, thanks for watching. We are the Bill Paying Hobbyists, with Ellie behind the camera, and I'm Michael. We're using our hobbies and skill sets to pay down debt and to save up for a down payment on a house. In an effort to come up with more ways to keep your life going on a tight budget, we're bringing you the next episode in our budget solution series. Today, we're changing the oil in our car instead of paying someone else to do it. Maybe this can throw a couple extra bucks in your wallet too. Let's get to it. Yes, we know this isn't a hobby. However, this is a way to save some money and we're all about budgeting and saving money for our 2021 financial goals. So a couple things you're gonna need first. Wait, let me stop. I am not a mechanic. I just know how to change my oil. If you don't know how to change your oil, get instruction. This may help you. Talk to your mechanic. You're gonna need a rag. You're gonna need a drip pan. This one, I like to use these because I can put the oil in here, I can put caps on it, I can take it to my local auto parts store and get rid of the used oil. I don't like to use one of those big open ones because then I have that stuff sloshing all over the place. You'll need your oil filter that's recommended for your car. You'll need the oil and the type of oil that's recommended for your car. I'm using a synthetic oil that is for vehicles with 75,000 miles or more, which is what I have. This is what I do to change my oil. If your car has been sitting longer than about four or five hours, you need to warm it up. That way the oil can run through the engine. So I let the car run until my temperature gauge red at normal operating temperature. Then I let the car sit. It's been sitting about 15 minutes now. I put it up on my ramps so that I can get up underneath my car. It's a small car and I need to be able to reach it. I also take off my filler cap. I wanna let that air come in there. Look at that dust around that thing. And I'll leave that off. And now we go underneath the car. We're under the car. And the first thing we need to do is remove the skid plate. For mine, it has torque head screws on it, so it's a T27. And I just take that bit and put it in a quarter inch driver, put it on my ratchet. I think mine's actually missing some screws, so. I only have a few to take out. Set them off to the side, don't put them in your way. And don't forget the cardboard. You always need to have cardboard down. Even if you have a pan, you want the cardboard because you're gonna drop oil and you don't want the oil on your driveway. Get that out of my way. Another one right there. And just look for all of these screws that are holding on your skid plate. Who taught you how to change oil? My dad. <laughs> my dad. It's pretty similar on every vehicle. Some are actually a lot harder to do because the oil filter is in a hard, hard place. This one's not in a bad place. It just, you gotta take the skid plate off and don't just leave your skid plate off. It's there for a reason. The skid plate is to protect the rest of your engine from debris and, you know, plastic bags getting up in there. If you're driving down the road one day, pick up a plastic bag and you'll think your car's on fire because it melted to something. Got on the exhaust manifold or something like that. All right, no, oh, that's out of my way. My oil plug is here. My filter is towards the front of the engine, right here. So there's a Fram on there right now. I think there was a sale, that's why I bought Fram. This is a 16, no, a 15 millimeter. So what I'm gonna do first, use my Three inch driver, get this close, take this off, my drain pan, leave it on my cardboard, get it close. When I take this off, the oil is gonna go that way, so I wanna come back here, but as it gets lower, it's gonna, instead of going out here, it's gonna start coming like that, so I wanna be in the right area to catch all of it at one time. Your oil's hot, even how, even if you've been letting it sit, so just be careful. All right, here's the tricky part. Can you do it without getting oil on your fingers? The answer is, drum roll please. That's a long drum roll. It is a long drum roll. <laughs> I'm taking my time because I'm trying to be careful. And here we go. And, oh, come on, boom. That's the best I've ever done. I got just a little bit on my fingers. And that's why you have a rack. Wipe your plug off. Make sure you don't have any metal filings on your plug. If you do, that means you have something rubbing inside your engine. The fuzz on it. So yeah, it's pretty clean. I'm gonna let that drain. And then when that's done, I'll put the plug back in and then I'll take the filter out. 
All right, so we got some little drips left. And when I put my car up on ramps, the front is actually a little bit higher than the back of the vehicle. And I think that's a good idea since the drain plug for my engine is back here. My engine is tilted back a little bit. I would think that helps a little bit more oil get out. I don't know for sure, but we're at the last end of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my plug back. Finger tight, I'm gonna wipe that excess off. All right, when you tighten this up, you don't have to be Superman and make it super tight. You will strip it out. It's just an aluminum oil pan. You want it tight, you just don't want to kill it. There you go, because the heat, cold, heat, cold, engine warming up, engine cooling off, it makes that metal heat, or er, expand and contract, expand and contract, and it actually tightens itself up as it's going. Time to do the oil filter. So I'm gonna move my pan down here. And this is the messy part, no matter what you do. And this should only be hand tight. And again, heat and contract, heat and contract. You can get an oil wrench if you want. You already see the look on Ellie's face. <laughs> you're gonna get dirty. Who? Me. Oh. Telling our viewers you're gonna get dirty. Oh, okay. I thought you meant me. Uh, you could always wear rubber gloves if you wanted to. Hold on to it good, because once it breaks loose, it's gonna drop. And just, there's a little spot right there in that pan, put it right there. And that will let it drain properly. All right, that's why we have a rag. After you get your oil filter off, you always wanna check this and make sure there's not any metal shavings to make sure you don't have that in there, that's bad. Just like when you check the drain pan plug. I have my new filter, and it's always a good idea to fill your filter with new oil about halfway full. That way when the engine cranks up, there's already oil in that filter and it keeps it going. And then you have a little bit of residual right there on the end. Rub it on the seal, on the gasket. That helps give you a nice, seal and i'm also gonna just barely touch that a little bit i don't want to rub too much because i don't want lint on it and then i'm gonna put this on make sure it's going on right there we go it spins like that it's good and hand tight boom done that's it don't tighten it anymore i'm done down here now i'm not going to drop my vehicle off the ramps yet because I still need to fill it up with oil and I want my car as level as possible my driveway is not level and also I'm going to put a little bit of oil in my engine let it sit for a couple seconds and then come down here and check and make sure I don't have any leaks that's the number one killer of your engine you didn't get it tight enough and you put the oil in there you go to start your oil your vehicle and you have a leak you're going to blow your engine up you know us we're all about a budget instead of getting a funnel that I actually forgot to get the last time I changed oil. I just made this and I keep forgetting to get one so I use it and it works perfect. Just set that right there. This engine calls for four and a half quarts of oil. The good thing about these five quart containers is they have the marks on the side of them. Five quarts is up to here and I've already put that much oil in the filter. So now I just need to go down to right here. That would be four and a half. I'm only gonna put in, like I said, a little bit right now to make sure I'm not leaking. Don't pour this way. Turn your bottle to the side like this, it'll actually pour better and it won't slosh everywhere. So I've, I now have a full quart of oil in the vehicle. So let's go down and check. Don't see any leaks there. Check the oil drain plug. I don't see any leaks there. So we're good to go. Now we can fill up. Now I can turn it this way because it's almost empty. The cap on, let it sit for a few minutes. And while it's sitting, I'm going to check my air filter. So my air filter is here. And for this vehicle, it is an eight millimeter. So I'm checking my filter. You know, it's, you should check your air filter probably every time you change your oil. I know that these are only good for, I think, supposedly 25,000 miles, I think it is. And if mine's in good shape, I could 
probably just blow it out with my air compressor. If you have an air compressor, you can do the same. Blow it from the inside out and you might extend the life of your air filter for a little while. That's what I do. Totally up to you. You can spend the money and go buy a new filter if you want to. I'm not telling you not to do that. And it's actually in very good shape. So I'm just going to take my air compressor and just blow it all in there. Just the reverse. Make sure you get this around that. Make sure it's tight. Make sure it's back in there. Inside. There. There's a little groove just like this one. Just like this one. On the bottom, you want to make sure that the rim of the filter goes in there, so it nice makes a nice little seal all the way around. Line all your screws back up, screw holes, and then put it back together. That is done. The last thing I need to do is put the skid plate back on. All right, so we're gonna put the skid plate back on. Slide it up. Hey there. Last thing we're going to do, check the oil. This is the dipstick. Pull it out. Clean it off. Don't even look at it. Just clean it off. Back in. Now look at it. Check it. And it says we're right at the top. So we are full. One other thing you want to do, just to be sure, Start your vehicle up, let it get to operating temperature, turn it off, let it sit for about 10 minutes and let that oil drain back down into the pan and then do this again and check your oil again just to make sure that you got enough in there because you want that oil to cycle through the engine you want enough oil to be in the engine. So that's your last step. And if you followed along, congratulations, you may have just changed your oil for the first time ever. I hope it helped. Again, consult your owner's manual and make sure you get the right oil and the right size filter. Check with the auto shop too. All right, yeah, that's a good boy, yeah. Yeah, be careful of the stool. Oh, got the leg, look at that red belly. All right, it's time for numbers. Basically for this one, we saved to sell ourselves about 60 bucks. To buy the oil and the oil filter, they had a deal at AutoZone, not sponsored, and I got the oil and the filter for about $40. The last time I went to a place to have the oil changed with synthetic oil, it cost us about $100, so, I only spent 40, I did it myself. It took me about an hour, so what? Saved myself 60 bucks, I can take Ellie out to dinner. So there you go. Score. Score, that's right, <laughs> a score. So thanks for watching, I hope you learned something. Remember, consult a professional. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.